So, what is the key element that will help restore the Snyderverse? Well, let's have a look at this article by Janum Torekia, and this was in the, the Daily Planet News. So let's have a look. We've seen Zack's controversial and realistic take on superheroes. We've seen him uh, growing his movies with heart and philosophy. But what is the one element that separates his universe from the others? Is it the Superman that has human emotions? Or the one with the black suit? Is it the Batman that kills or is it the Batman that swears? Is it the one is it the Wonder Woman that shows no mercy in a war? Or is it the Wonder Woman who gave up everything? Humanity. The answer to this has has been in the front of us since the beginning of the saga. Snyder uses dreams to tell his na narratives of the story. He dreams of a complex, uh, stronger story with ominous tales of a possible future. He uses foreshadowing to provoke heroic actions in Man of Steel. We saw Superman having a nightmare of a, a world where Zod terraforms Earth into Krypton. He is the first, this is the first indication of where Zack wants to head with his character. He loves the idea of real consequences and dreams play out uh, the most crucial role in his stories, as in The Man of Steel. This nightmare shows kal -El what could happen if he shakes hands with Zod. Hence, he fought him. He killed him, because he knew Zod would not stop. You couldn't let him wipe out the human race. But we do see consequences. We do see him worried about his nightmare and we also see people's views of how they see Superman saving the world. Superman. For Superman it was important to stop Zod. To stop, not kill. Hence why we see the Black Zero fight. He could have killed Zod way before the Royal Kryptonian combat re released how powerful he can become. The consequences are seen in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Will we see how divided the world's view is regarding the Man of Steel? Some love him, others despise him, some fear him or others worship him. In reality, he simply is trying to live a normal life and these opinions do worry Clark a lot. Again, why did nobody get, why did some people not get that with Man of Steel or BBS? It's beyond me. One specific portion of the movie, this can be seen in as the Day of the Dead scene, where we see Superman's worried face. After he saves a girl, now there could be multiple inter, uh, inter, uh, interpretations of this scene. The, the one I would like to go with, interpretations of this scene, sorry about that. The one I would like to go with is that he has seen himself standing over skulls in the Man of Steel. Nightmare I mentioned earlier, and seeing people here face painted the skeletons for the Day of the Dead celebration reminds some of that nightmare of how many died on his watch. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Another character uh, that has nightmares is Batman. His existential crisis in Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice is told via nightmares. The movie itself starts with a nightmare where he dreams about his parents dying. He calls it a beautiful lie. The reason being explained by director himself on Vero. The idea that in the dream the righteous man, the good man, seeks justice, but that quest leads him into darkness and his own moral code is in question or may only be a construct of his grief. So the lie of the light becomes justice equals light. For Batman, it's the opposite. Zack Snyder to Alex Andres on Vero Cruz Social. Second dream sequence is where he sees a man bat at his parents' grave. We see how badly his past is haunting him, affecting him, how much he's been through, how it's changed his perspective of the world. Another character that has nightmares is, is Batman. His existence in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice is told via nightmares. We see his past in a nightmare scene where he sees man bat. We see how badly his past is affecting him and how much he's been through and how it's changed his perspective in the world. 20 years in Gotham, we've seen what promises are worth. How many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? Bruce Wayne? BVS. 
Another nightmare we saw is Batman's vision of the future. In a post-apocalyptic world where evil has won and Earth has become a hellscape. That's the most important dream sequence and acts as this catalyst to the final stand against what he once considered evil. Superman. Yes, he has seen, he has his own views on what Superman is seen. Kal-El as an evil entity in the dream sequence and Barry Allen telling him, you were right about him, tickles his paranoia, causing him to cement his belief. For Superman's true intention, he becomes firm on the decision to kill Superman until the end of the story, where he realises that he was wrong and redeems himself. Men are still good. We fight, we kill, we betray one another. But we can rebuild. We will. We have to. Bruce Wayne, BVS. Now coming back to the nightmare, that one scene sets up the future of Zack's DC Cinematic Universe, aka the Snyderverse. That's the scene that motivates Bruce to unite the League and prepare for the arrival of Darkseid. That's the route Zack was headed to since the beginning of what uh, to what have they failed to stop evil? What is their worst fears came true? What if evil takes over and what happens? Whatever they do, they lose. And Darkseid releases the anti-life equation onto Earth. Zack's five-part arc is eventually was set to reach the point we can say that the first three movies being Man of Steel, BVS, Dawn of Justice and Zack Snyder's Justice League in the arc are simply the road to the nightmare they set up for the stage for what and who and who's to come. We pay attention to the Zack Snyder's Justice League marketing. We would notice that a good significant part of it focused towards the nightmare elements in the first trailer for the Snyder Cut. We saw another shot at the nightmare world where Wonder Woman's shield and Aquaman's trident, along with a few other references, tell us who died and who's alive. We also saw three uh, apo uh, apocalyptians in the trailer. One was Steppenwolf, since he's the primary villain of the story, and the others were Yuxus, Darkseid, and his pers uh, personal slave servant, Desad. The first teaser for the Snyder Cut is a shot of Diana looking at a painting of Darkseid, being terrified while understanding how great the danger is, even a warrior who literally smiles at the face from death. Doomsday. It's fearful. The new trailer that dropped on Valentine's Day, the 2nd of uh, February 14th, also focused on a significant amount of time on the apocalyptics and the nightmare. We saw Apocalypse along with Dark Side the Sad and Granny Goodness. We even have a Joker tease towards the end, all hitting what's, what was supposed to come in Justice League 3. We have also seen the brand new posters for the movie, which shows us some kind of ruins. That is a big hint of the post-apocalypse world. There have been multiple t-shirts, merchandise releases. Also, a uh, majority of what's devoted to the apocalypse and God Dark Side. There have been three designs for DC's Dark Side merchandise so far, and an AFSP Dark Side de uh, design. Zack has been sharing a lot of pictures on the post-apocalyptic world so far. We've seen a Batflex shot, three uh, Jared Leto shots and one Joe Magnello Deathstroke shot, all of which belongs to the Nightmare timeline. Now why would they market scenes from a story that's taking place in the future? Because that's where he wants to focus to be. Yes, he's marketing Ray as Cyborg, Ben as Batman and everyone else for this four hour long story but this is a specific part of the arc that he focuses the most. The biggest hint is that Snyder is telling us to invest in the dreams, to invest in, it, in the vision. That's what is going to make this possible. If we simply are satisfied with what we get, with what we got in 2017, then that's the end of the Snyderverse for us. We need to prove that we need to prove the studios that we're, we're in for the entirety of the saga. This is why we need to focus on scenes from the future in order to keep the chances of future chapters alive. The movie needs the audience and it needs to generate the talk. Especially for a nightmare sequence. The goal uh, is to make the nightmare scenes in Snyder's Cut the most talked about movie in history. Then we shall surely restore the Snyderverse. 
We are proving to the higher ups that there is a massive audience who wants to see what's next. Whatever happens, do not give up. This is not a cul-de-sac, but a cut de sac. Trust and invest in his vision. Uh, when the fight comes, we will need you, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder's Justice Weekly reason on 8th of March 2021 on HBO Max in the US and other streaming services, depending on upon the region. Make sure you stream it as much as possible and keep the Snyderverse alive. The fate of the universe lies in your hands. So please, take this time. Tell the normies, tell the people that are not into hero movies. Tell the Marvel fans, tell anybody. Spread the word. Get this trending. Restore the Snyderverse. And you will, and I promise you will not be disappointed. And please, not don't just tweet. But why not rent or buy uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League as many times over? And, and get the sales and we can actually get our revenge on Warner Brothers from taking this from us in the first place. Let us know your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Thank you. Store the Snyderverse. <laughs> Thank you.